Let us now solve quadratic equations which are in vertex form. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, over this fifth in our series of quadratic equations, we'll try to understand how do we solve quadratic equations which are given in vertex form. Well, vertex form, you'll soon learn, gives you the vertex of a parabola directly. However, have a look at these types of equations when written like this, they are called vertex form. Well, in case you want to learn directly from me, feel free to send an email on globalmathinstitute at gmail.com. Our students are doing extremely well and we can be part of your success story. Also, keep contributing. Thanks a lot for your great contributions and suggestions. If you can, why not? This is your channel. Post your questions, we will provide absolutely free solutions. As you know, since last 15 years, we are providing free services to you with 17,000 plus videos and answering questions almost daily. More than one question is being answered with a new video. Perfect. Now let's begin with solution of these questions and understand their strategies. Here are the very first two questions. The very one, first one is 2 times x minus 1 whole square equals to 0. We need to solve means we need to find the value of x which will make this equation true. So first thing we can divide by 2. So we can write x minus 1 whole square equals to 0. Second we can square root that means x minus 1 is square root of 0 which is also 0. And then we can rearrange and write x equals to 1. So that becomes the solution of this particular quadratic equation. You note that here. We have only one solution. This makes sense to you, right? Now let's look into the next question, which is given to us as 4 minus x plus 2 whole square equals to 0. Let's rearrange it. So you may take 4 on the other side, make them both negative, or you may also write 4 equals to x plus 2 whole square. Now you can square root it. So whenever you square root, you have to write both plus and minus. Since you know, minus 2 square is also 4, right? And we get x plus 2. So clearly, what do we have here? We have plus and minus 2 is equal to x plus 2. So that means x can now have two values, correct? So let me show you how to work beyond this. So as we are saying, x plus 2 is plus 2 or minus 2. That means x is equal to minus 2 plus 2 or minus 2 minus 2. Do you see that? So that is how we get two answers for this particular question. Minus 2 plus 2 is indeed 0. Minus 2 minus 2 is minus 4. So the two answers for this are x is equal to minus 4 or 0. Perfect. Previous it was x equals to just 1, correct? So we could get one solution, we could get two solutions, and we'll soon learn that we may not even get a solution for a quadratic equation, which you have seen in past videos, right? Great. So now here are two more questions, which are actually very similar to what we just did. Let's see, how do we solve them? So this one is x plus 4 whole square minus 9 equals to 0 means I could write x plus 4 whole square equals to 9 square root both sides x plus 4 equals to plus and minus square root 9 which is plus and minus 3. So x is equals to minus 4 plus minus 3. Do you see that? So when I write x equals to minus 4 plus minus 3 it really means what? It means either we'll take plus or minus right. So x equals to minus 4 plus 3 which is minus 1 or we will say x equals to minus 4 minus 3 which is x equals to minus 7. So we have two answers that is x equals to minus 7 or minus 1. Is that clear to you? That is how we are going to solve it. Perfect. So I hope this strategy is absolutely clear. 
Feel free to send an email on globalmathinstitute at gmail.com to learn more. And your contributions can help many others worldwide. So keep contributing. We can be part of your success story. The next example here is minus 36 e plus x plus 5 whole square equals to 0, right? So we could take minus 36 to the right side, giving us x plus 5 whole square equals to 36 square root x plus 5 equals to plus or minus square root 36, which is x plus 5 equals to plus minus 6 or x is equal to minus 5 plus minus 6. Makes sense. So now we can write down both the solutions, one with x equals to minus 5 plus 6 and the other with x equals to minus 5 minus 6. The first one gives us 1, the other one gives us minus 11. So we have two solutions, x can be equal to minus 11 or 1. Perfect. So now we can take up the next two questions exactly similar to what we did. So that is the vertex form and that is how you have to work with. Slightly more complicated than the factored form or the others which we did earlier. Now here we have 0 0.5 and x minus 3 whole square equals to 18. So we can say x minus 3 whole square is equals to 18 divided by 0 0.5 which is how much? So which is like 18 times 2 and that is 36. So x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus square root of 36 which is plus or minus 6 and x is equal to 3 plus or minus 6. You can also write the answer as this x equals to plus or minus 6 and then get your two values like x equals to 3 plus 6 or 3 minus 6 which is 9 and minus 3. Is that clear? So we get two solutions to this. One is 9, the other one is minus 3. Perfect. Now, the next question, interesting, we have x minus 1 whole square plus 49 equals to 0, which we could write as x minus 1 whole square equals to minus 49. You see, on the left-hand side, we have a perfect square. Hmm. On the right-hand side, it's a negative quantity. So that negative quantity can never exist, right? Square is always positive, right? So no solution, right? So that does not exist. We can write a couple of things here. One, we can write no solution, right? Because the square is positive, never negative. So that brings us to the end of this video on the vertex form. So I hope there you are with me. Feel free to send an email on the address globalmathinstitute at gmail.com to learn more. Follow our playlist to master strategies. How do we solve quadratic equations? Simple as that. Perfect. So we have now 4 plus x plus 4 whole square equals to 40. Okay. So we have x plus 4 whole square equals to 40 minus 4 which is 36. Well square rooted x plus 4 whole square square becomes x plus 4 plus minus square root 36 which is equal to plus minus 6 and so x is equal to minus 4 plus minus 6 and you know the two solutions like we had done earlier is x plus 6 which is 2 and x minus 4 minus 6 which is minus 10. So those are the two solutions for our equation correct. You can write down x equals to minus 10 or 2 perfect. Then we have the next question, which is also the last question of this particular video, which is half of x minus 1 whole square plus 8 equals to 0. Well, let's take them on the other side. We can write half of x minus 1 whole square equals to 8, right? And then x minus 1 whole square equals to 8 times 2, which is 16. Now square root, so x minus 1 equals to plus minus square root of 16 which is plus minus 4 and that gives us again two solutions and which is x is equal to 1 plus minus 4 which is x could be equal to 1 plus 4 which is 5 or x equals to 1 minus 4 which is minus 3. You see that? So we have two solutions. You see as we progressed we kind of wrote our answers earlier faster and more simpler, right? So you could write like this that's not a problem so get the expertise of doing it practice makes you perfect 
So now I think you can solve all the equations which are given in this particular form, which we call vertex form. Feel free to share your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your contributions and have a great day. Bye.